welcome to today's chemistry session today in this session we will have the topic extraction of aluminium from alumina or aluminium oxide and this process is also known as hall herold process we know the principal ore of aluminium is bauxite when we get bauxite from the earth's crust it contain many impurities such as iron oxide titanium oxide sand etc so we will take this powdered bauxite ore and we will and i will take this to undergo concentration and the concentration method is known as leaching of bauxite ore leaching of bauxite ore will give us pure alumina and once we get the pure alumina or al2o3 we can carry out hall herold process and hall herold process is a process of electrolysis that is the process is done by carrying electric current or passing electric current so in order to conduct ele electrolysis the substance under study should be a good conductor of electricity when we come to the case of aluminium oxide or solid alumina is not a good conductor of electricity because the chem the chemical bonds in solid alumina are, are more covalent in character that means the electrons in this compound are shared to form chemical bonds so there are no free electrons available for carrying electric current so solid alumina is a poor conductor of electricity so in that case we cannot consider solid alumina for carrying a process like a whole herold process which is an electrolysis process so what is next what is the next option since we know that when a solid is in its molten state or in its liquid state it can conduct more conduct electricity more or its electricity or uh, its conducting electric uh, conducting ability uh, increases so in that case what we can do is we can melt this solid alumina into its molten state or into its liquid state now we look into the melting point of alumina we need around 2000 degree celsius to change this solid alumina to its molten state but it's not economical and it's not cost effective because we need a we need an enormous amount of electricity to change the solid alumina to its molten state it's not practical so in that case we have to think about something else uh, for an example we can think about uh, uh, well an example of uh, sodium chloride which is known as table salt if you want to change the solid table table salt a spoonful of a table salt table salt or sodium chloride into its uh, molten form or liquid form we need around the 800 degrees celsius but think about taking a little amount of water and adding this uh, sodium chloride or salt table salt into that water and uh, just stirring it what happens that uh, table salt or sodium chloride easily get dissolved in it and forms its liquid form in the room temperature itself that means by using suitable solvents we can decrease the melting point of some solid substances so in the case of alumina we can opt for cryolite or calcium fluoride cryolite its chemical formula is na3alf6 na3alf6 that is cryolite or calcium fluoride caf2 calcium fluoride cryolite or calcium fluoride we cannot when we think about okay we'll consider cryolite when we think about the cryolite if we can dissolve this solid alumina in, in liquid cryolite this solid alumina will acquire its molten state or in its uh, liquid state with a temperature 900 degree celsius to 1000 degree celsius that you can see a huge difference between these two temperatures it is rather very less temperature so its melting point has come down by by the usage of cryolite as a solvent for it to get into its molten state so we will think about cryolite so uh, by making into its molten state or in its liquid form what happens to the solid alumina this solid alumina in its molten form or its uh, or in its liquid form its electrical conductivity increases now it's ready for hall herold process yes here now the experimental setup for the hall herold process is ready
ready. Now you can see here, it is a steel tank. It is an, sorry, it is an iron tank. It is an iron tank. Inside the iron tank, that is the inner part of the iron tank is lined with carbon. This is a carbon lining. And this carbon lining inside the iron tank is connected with the negative terminal of the battery. That is, it is the negatively charged electrode. So, it is cathode. And then, here you can see, upon a copper clamp, graphite rods are hanging down to the electrolyte. And those graphite rods are connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And so, that is the positive electrode, that is anode. And here, we have the electrolyte. Electrolyte is made up of molten alumina and cryolite. That is Na3, AlF6. And here, above at the top of the electrolyte, powdered cork is layered. Powdered cork is spread over the topper layer of the electrolyte. Why powdered cork is kept at the top or the surface of the electrolyte? Because this layered cork or powdered cork act as a lid or act as a cover so that it will not allow the system to release its heat so that the high temperature will be maintained in the system all throughout the process. That is why we keep the powdered cork at the surface of the electrolyte. And now what happens? What are the reactions that happens when the electricity uh, starts flowing through it? When electricity passes, this alumina, Al2O3, will be dissociated or will be split up into Al3 plus aluminium ions and O2 minus ions, oxide anions. So, you know how it gets Al3 plus charge and O2 minus charge because it is Al2O3. So, we know it will, it will be getting its the, just opposite charge of what is it contain. So, Al is containing 2, so O2 minus Oxygen is containing 3, so Al3 plus, you know that. So, Al2O3 will be split into two ions. So, one is positively charged and the other one is negatively charged. Al3 plus and O2 minus ions. And what happens? Once this Al3 plus ions are formed in the electrolyte, this cathode is negatively charged. And so, this negatively charged cathode, which is this carbon lining, will attract this positively charged cations that is Al3 plus to itself. Being deficient, as you see it is 3 plus, being deficient with 3 electrons, it will reach to the negatively charged cathode which is electron rich. It will accept 3 electrons from the cathode and will get reduced to liquid aluminium. So that here reduction happens. As you know, when uh, concerning electron transfer reactions, when an element accepts electrons, it undergo reduction. So Al3 plus accepts electrons to form aluminium. That is, reduction happens at cathode. And now when coming to the anode, anode is positively charged. And that is graphite road. You know graphite is uh, another form of what? Carbon. Graphite is another form of carbon, so it is carbon itself, okay? So carbon itself. This carbon being positively charged, it will attract negatively charged ions from the electrolyte. That is oxide anions. Oxide anions, O2 minus ions that are present in electrolyte will be attracted towards the anode and there it will join with carbon to form carbon monoxide by leaving or emitting or losing two electrons. So, there at anode, oxidation happens. You know what is oxidation? In terms of electron transfer reactions, when any element releases electrons, it undergo oxidation. So, here at anode, oxygen combines with the carbon of the graphite road, carbon atom of the car carbon road or graphite road to form carbon monoxide by releasing two electrons. And now, it can undergo one more reaction. This carbon again can combine with two oxide ions to form carbon dioxide and releasing four electrons at a stretch. Okay. So this is the reactions that are happening in at cathode and at anode. And here what is important here is 
at every time this oxide anion goes to graphite road or the carbon road carbon atom is losing itself to form gas carbon monoxide gas or carbon dioxide gas in that process graphite is eaten up or loses itself so uh, approximately when we get uh, 1 kilogram of aluminium around 0.5 kilogram of carbon is eaten up by this process so it is very important to note that we have to replace this graphite road on the process of all the road process now and then so that to keep it uh, smoothly going this all the road process otherwise this graphite road will be eaten up on the process of the formation of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide so this is all about the whole herald process. I hope you have understood. This is uh, the end of our chemistry session today. Thank you. Thank you very much.